Hello, everyone. My name is Brett Denman, and welcome to another episode of Our High Calling. I pray this last week has been a blessed one for you, as it has been for me and my family. You know, every every week we pray and 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 thank God for for bringing us through. Thank you for providing for our needs and even some of our wants. Uh, you know what I'm really uh, thankful for is, is to have the Word of God available to us at any time on your phone or in you know in a book form. I'm just so thankful for the Bible, and I I know you are as well. You know, for us to have uh, God's love letter to humanity at, at our finger uh, tips anytime we want it, and um, it's something that a lot of people don't take advantage of as much as they should. And I know that f- uh, for me and my family, you know, we try to have our Bible readings. Uh, you know, I get my kids to write down verses, to memorize verses, and we also have these little tracks that we can uh, look up verses whenever you know we we need them. And this little Bible track that I have called "Spotlight on the Bible," um, they started printing these in like 1961, and it's pretty interesting. It it, it asks you know where to look when you when you need to to find when you're going through different things in your life. You know, uh, you know when you're sad, when you need encouragement, if you're struggling, and, and things like that. And it just gives you a Bible verse because you know the Bible can take care of us, can it? The the Bible has promises, has uh, inspiring words, and you know a lot of people in the Bible are going through the same things that that we are going through now. You know, just because it's two thousand years, you know, after the death of Christ, doesn't mean that we're all uh, not still human, not still dealing with the same. Uh, issues you know there i'm sure there was people in the days of jesus that were in debt dealing de- how are they going to get out of debt you know maybe they got a, a spouse who's not faithful you know they, they, they're going through the same things we are and, and and the word of god i'm sure encouraged them probably a lot of psalms back then the days of jesus because i know that when i i look at my spotlight on the bible and it 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 sends me to different places. A lot of it is in Psalms. And I'm going to read some of it here. But, you know, when you uh, open up the Word of God, you know, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead and direct you that you may understand. Because there's no no point in us continuing to just read the Bible all the time, constantly, you know, learning but not understanding it. You know, what does it help us if we don't understand it? And then what about applying it to our life? You know, the Bible is full of wonderful assurances and promises. And especially for those people who truly believe in Jesus Christ, that he's the son of God. And when you do that, when you accept Jesus as your savior, um, these promises can be yours. And, you know, for people who are out there who are listening, who maybe haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, let's just go over a few steps. What must you do? Uh to make the promises of the Bible yours? Well, the first thing you have to do is recognize that you cannot be saved by trying to be good or by doing the best you can or by being a member of a social or religious organization. God says that we are not saved by our good works, right? We're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, when you recognize that uh, you can't save yourself, the next thing you got to do is you got to confess, right? That you, you confess that you cannot save yourself and that you are a guilty sinner worthy of God's righteous judgment and that you are hopelessly lost without the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And if you, if you do those two things and then you, what you need to do is then believe the good news that Christ died on, uh, on the cross for you and for me. You know, he he died for you and settled your sin debt as his death on Cal, uh, on Calvary's cross. And and believe the good news that Christ was raised from the dead and now lives to save all who will come to him in faith. And you know, Jesus fulfilled prophecy. You know, I forget how many is it's, it's an insane amount of prophecies that Jesus fulfilled by dying on the cross. And what we can do is we we can look at that and say, wow, you know, the, the Bible is true. The Bible was inspired 
by God, written by men. And it's, it's to me personally, it's the Bible, it's the King James Version. You know, the other versions I think are a little wonky. Um, I have issues with quite a few of the other versions, but I think you're pretty safe. Now, is every any version going to be perfect? No, we, we have Satan trying to corrupt the Bible. But I think if you get the old King James 1611, I believe, Bible, I think you'll be okay. But then, then again, you know, I'm not saying that any version will bring you to the truth and understanding of Jesus. But as long as the Holy Spirit is helping you, and as long as you have a, you're doing it with good intention, that that you're, you're faithfully giving uh, everything over to God and he's going to mold and shape you, then, then you, even the, the NIV, which I call the nearly inspired version, even the NIV uh, can help people find God. You know, I think it's good for milk. You know, I, I used the NIV when I was a baby Christian. It, it just was easier to read than the King James Version. But once I matured, you know, I kind of put aside the NIV and... Now I just use the King James Version. But when you have, have confessed, if you've accepted Jesus Christ, you know, you have to call on the name of the Lord with a sincere desire to be saved from your sins. And God has promised, and it says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then when you do that, when you've gone down these steps, of, of accepting Jesus Christ, confessing, forsaking your sin, and now you decide you're going to walk in the newness of life, you, 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 you can rely on God's sure promise. And it's not your feelings, because by faith we declare that we're saved by the death of Jesus for the forgiveness of, of our sins, right? And when we openly confess him as our Lord and Savior, then we get to accept these promises, because now we're a child of God. And so I have this, um, this little, um, what is it, a Bible reading survey. And like I said, it, it, it's, it's really great. So let's, let's look at it a little bit. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead us places. It says here that when you are feel, feeling guilt-stricken, go to Psalm 51. And I won't read all of these verses because some of them are pretty long, but let's see what it says a little bit in Psalm 50, 51. So if I'm feeling guilty, it says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, only thee, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And, you know, the, the most famous one is you go down to verse um, 10, where he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Have, have we all sinned and fall short of the glory of God? We have. And here David is confessing that he also has fallen short. And he wants God to help him. And God wants to help us. You know, the, the one thing here that, that really stands out to me is that he says in verse three, I acknowledge my transgression. So we admit we sinned, you know, whatever it is that you did, whatever it is I did, we have to, you know, come forth and say to God, forgive me. This is what I did. And he says here, and my sin is ever before me. So if, if we, let's say that we backslid and, and, and did some, alcohol drinking and now we're sorry for it and we ask God to forgive us to purge that desire from our heart that we may not want it anymore you can't just forget about it now you have to be vigilant because it's a temptation for you and Satan is, is, wants to see you fall 
So we have to be careful about that. We have to keep the the sin before eyes, just so that we, we can be vigilant. And, you know, verse 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Man, that's what I want. I, I need God to purge me and wash me thoroughly when I sin. I mean, Psalm 51 is, is just great. If you're struggling, you know, because we all get stuck in a rut sometimes. It's sin, ask forgiveness, sin, ask forgiveness. It's the same one. Because it's the, the love of that sin is in our heart. And we're not purging it out of our heart. Yeah, we might go on a little way, while and not indulge in it. But then something triggers us because we let our guard down and we're back to doing it again. So we need to be delivered. We, we need to, to, to give it up once and for all. And Psalm 51 will help you. Um, let's go to another one. How about if you're lonely? Let's go to Psalm 139. Let's see what Psalm 139 says about loneliness. All right. It says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou uh, compassed my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue. And lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me, uh, me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain to it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither... Shall I free from thy presence? See, here, here it's talking about God is with us always. If you're lonely, you don't have to be lonely because God is with you. He knows everything about you. He knows um, everything, uh, uh, what you're thinking, right? Your actions. If you go down to verse 23, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. So here, what we got to do is we have to ask God to search us, search our heart, and, and, and he will reveal truth to you through the, through the Holy Spirit. That still small voice that God will say, hey, that's not on. You, you need to stop doing that. That's not right. And he, know, he even knows your thoughts because, remember, it's not just actions. It's, it's your thoughts. And, and that was something that... Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't realize before I became a Christian that that was important to God. I don't know if I've told this story. I think I, I said it in a podcast before. But in when I was, uh, let's see, it was 2002. And a friend of mine, me and uh, my friend Paul Kitzman, Kitsy, we went uh, to the Salt Lake City Winter Olympics. So I was living in Portland. We were living in Portland. And we decided, let's drive down there. And let's check out some Winter Olympics. So we got in his car and we drove. Um, it's not it actually it wasn't that it wasn't that far. It was only a couple days, right? We just head east towards Idaho, and then once you get to Boise, you just go south, and then boom, right there, Salt Lake City. It was a couple days, not not too terrible. So we get there, and actually, um, all the good stuff was happening in Park City, which is a little bit outside of Salt Lake City. So we. And, you know, this is 2002. Uh, it's like February 2002. So 9-11 had just kind of happened. And so we get there. And there's like Black Hawk helicopters flying around. And um, it, it was, you know, it wasn't too well attended, I would say. Probably because the weather was pretty dry. There wasn't a lot of snow. Um, but what there were uh, was a lot of Mormons. And on every street corner, they were holding up signs. And, you know, this is, you know, I, I hadn't been converted to Jesus until 2003. So this is, you know, a year uh, before I, I even, you know, gave my heart to Christ. So I was pretty secular at the time. And I had known a little bit of the Bible uh, when I went to college. I went to a Lutheran college, the last school I attended. So they, they made me take some Bible classes, but I wasn't, I don't remember any stuff that the Mormons were telling me. So the Mormons, they were telling me stuff about, you know, abortion and about homosexuality and all these other things that really at the time, um, 
I probably was on the wrong side of the fence on. But then this one guy was telling me that God judges my thoughts. And that really kind of threw me for a loop because I was thinking, no, God judges me for what I do. You know, if I if I'm thinking I want to punch you in the face, God judges me if I ultimately punch you in the face, not if I'm thinking about it. And so I kind of pushed back a little bit with that guy and he was like, no. And he was like giving me Bible verses. But at that point, I was like, I, I don't want to hear that. Um, but it's actually true. You know, God knows our thoughts. He judges our thoughts, whether we actually do the deed or not. If if we're thinking bad things and that that counts against us, even Jesus talking about, you know, men, if you're thinking about uh, other women in a lustful way, whether you commit the act or not, you've already committed adultery if you're married. So thoughts are very important. So when David here is, is saying, try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That's very important. It's very important that we overcome anything wicked, whether it's in deed or whether it's in thought or whether it's our words. We got to overcome that stuff. And the only way that we can do that is obviously through learning, right? We got to read, read our Bibles and, and to follow it and, and to trust in Jesus that he can help us overcome it. Because if we've been doing it for a long time, uh, you know, some, some things are harder than others to get rid of. Um, and a lot of times uh, what we think about um, is is the hardest thing to go because that's the easiest to hide you know it's hard to hide gambling it's hard to hide you know going to the bars and it's hard to hide stealing uh because it you know if you get caught boom you know it, your sin is out there for everybody to see but if you're just thinking about it you know god ultimately knows and that's who we're trying to please at the end of the day we're trying to please god not man so we need to even overcome that all right it says here when you need encouragement, go to Psalm 103. All right, so I need a little encouragement today. You probably need some encouragement today. Let's go to Psalm 103 and let's read a little bit. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Wow. Uh, that is encouraging. You know, when, when you know, you're in, uh, visiting somebody in the hospital, don't you think they'd like to hear that? Or maybe you're not feeling well, you're going through some issues. You'd like to hear that. It's God who can heal, who can forgive, who can redeem. God does all these things for us. He can bring us out of the pit and set us on the mountaintop. So that's, that's great. All right. Um, I need, let's see, how about some assurance? It says, if you want assurance, you should go to Romans eight. Okay. Let me go to Romans eight and let's see what Romans eight has to say. Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So remember, here in Romans 8, we're, we're getting assurance. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin condemns sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So here we're having encouragement because we're supposed to be spiritually minded people. We're not after the flesh. It's not about satisfying our eyes and our ears and and our and our you know whatever it is it's not it's spiritual we're we're walking in the spirit and remember that when we change when we're born again we're 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 born into the spirit 
and now we're spiritual people, right? We're led by the Holy Spirit, right? We have ministering spirits, the angels who are helping us, the Holy Spirit, all these things. We are spiritually minded. And here it says, uh, for to be carnally minded is death. So if you're just worried about self, right, just pleasing yourself, if you're just worried about having a good old time, you know, putting whatever it is into your body, uh, destroying your body, because, you know, you don't care. This is the only life you get. Um, if that's your attitude, then then you're, you're living for death. But uh, as Christians, as, as born-again, uh, you know, Christians, we're, we're not living for death. We're living for life. And, and not this life, but the one to come. So that's why we treat our body as the temple of the Holy Spirit, that we make our body acceptable to God. That's why we, we eat good food and we exercise and, you know, we're, we're not poisoning ourselves with the things we're putting in our mind. You know, and I'm not just talking about the stuff that, you know, going down into your tummy. You know, the stuff that we're listening to and watching, is, is it also um, pleasing to God? It says here, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. That's a, that's a, that's a wonderful assurance that, you know what? It, it doesn't matter what's happening in, in your life, carnally speaking. As long as you are, are trying to, to live that righteous life, right? Righteousness means right living. As long as you're trying to, to live for God, He will provide for your needs. He'll take care of you. You know, He'll, he'll help you to have a roof over your head and, and He'll get you food. And He'll, you know, if you need a ride, He'll get you a ride. He'll take care of you. He doesn't want your aspirations to be here on earth. He doesn't want you to be striving and working for, you know, trying to make more money so you can have a bigger house and just up up the level, the comfort of, of your life. Because remember, this, this world is not our home. And I talked about that last week, that we're just sojourners here. And what it is for us now is that we need to, to, to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, and that uh, what we're trying to do is overcome the world because the world is flesh the world is carnal it says here in verse 11 but if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh for if we live after the flesh ye shall die but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live so what are we doing? We're giving our body, we're giving our life to Jesus Christ and allowing him to lead and direct our paths. And when he says, love your enemies, we're going to love our enemies. And when he says, you know, give to the poor, we're going to give to the poor. You know, all these things, right? We're going to read the Beatitudes and, and we're, going to, we're going to be the salt of the world. And we're going to do all these things and we're going to sacrifice ourselves because we, just like Jesus, we're here to serve and not be served. You know, we're, we're those people that make sure everybody else has eaten before you've eaten. And you're going to make sure that you've taken care of other people. And remember, don't weary in doing good because Jesus sees what you're doing. Listen, you might not get a pat on the back from the world. You might not get men's applause. That's okay. God knows what you're doing. God sees what you're doing and he knows your intentions. And if your intentions are pure and they're good, then, then all the better for you right? Let's keep reading. I, I like this. How about sons of God? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So let's let our life reflect who we believe. So that people can see it in us. Remember, your life is the best sermon that that anybody can preach. Let 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 your life represent your faith. Wow, that's good. Okay, that was under assurance. Okay, here it says, facing a crisis. 
So if we're facing a crisis, we need to go to Proverbs uh, chapter 8. So let's go to Proverbs. Uh, let me find it. Here we go. Proverbs chapter 8. If we're facing a crisis, it says, um, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way, in the places of the path. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and openings of my lips shall be right things, for my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, not, uh, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty intentions, inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Wow. So here we have, you know, God is saying, if you, if you take the wisdom that I have given you, it's going to completely change your life. If, if, you, if you take this wisdom, it, 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 is going, uh, it is going to change you. It's going to uh, help you, right? You know, what is, a, what is a, a froward mouth, right? That is, you know, it's, you know, turn that frown upside down, right? A froward mouth is when you're speaking bad things. You know, the, the fear of the Lord is, is to hate sin and to give glory to God. That's the fear of the Lord. And that's what he wants of us. If we, if we fear God, then we're going to hate evil. We're going to hate pride. We're going to hate arrogancy and the evil way of the world. We're going to hate that stuff. And we don't want that attached to us. And if we um, can overcome that, then God is going to counsel us with, with sound wisdom. And if we accept the counsel of God, then, then, then we are going to overcome whatever crisis that we're going through. All right, let's go all the way to the end. It says uh, in number th uh, verse 32, Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul, and they that hate me love death. So here it's talking about wisdom. So we have to search it out. We have to look for it. We have to find this wisdom of God. And if we do that, then we can totally overcome uh, whatever crisis we're, we're going through. So in, in, this little, in this little tract, you know, it's talking about um, you know, if you're doubting, if you're discouraged, if you're fearful, you know, uh, if do you need, uh, when you need a verse that's uplifting, when you need some courage, when you need peace, you know, the Bible has it all. And it also shares with you, you know, the verses that everybody has come to memorize and to love, right? Uh, God so loved, you know, where does that take you? John 3, 16, right? In my father's house are many mansions. Where's that going? That's John 14, 1 to 3, right? And then you have the shepherd's palm, uh, Psalm, Psalm 23. You have the Beatitudes, Matthew 5. You have the love chapter, 1 Corinthians uh, 13. You have the suffering servant, Isaiah 53. The Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6. You know, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 to 7. So you have access to all these different wonderful themes that are in the bible and that's that's what we that's what we have to do we have to seek them out we have to go to the word of god the word of god is going to comfort you the word of god is going to bring you wisdom and knowledge and understanding the, the word of god is, is going to help you to overcome uh, whatever it is in the world that's that's fighting against you 
and it's going to change your life because the, the, the Bible is going to give you new direction, new purpose. And when, when we have that, then, then we have life and we have it more abundantly because that's what God wants in us. So s- seek out the word of God. Dig into your Bible. Read these themes and, and, and memorize them. Put them in your heart and share them uh, with other people. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word of God. We thank you for your love and mercy. We thank you for what your son did for us, dying on the cross, taking away the sins of this world, uh, sacrificing himself when he himself was sinless. Lord, we ask you to bless us this upcoming week. Lead and direct us. Be with us in all that we do. Help us to overcome. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I thank you, everyone. I pray you all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you right back here next time. God bless.